poor, you know, the execution. Um, we had seven turnovers, but I, I thought the the second unit has to do a lot better job of, you know, maintaining and, you know, to expect the starters to come in and uh, save us in moments like that. That's that's a pretty tough uh, assignment when a team is rolling like that. I thought we gave them um, a lot of momentum with the turnovers. I mean, thank God they had a ton that we scored off of, but we just have to be better. I told our guys that. Um, we feel kind of funky about a win like this, but we ain't, we're not giving it back. We got to learn from it. Um, but that was that was what I saw. Our, our second unit is good enough to to maintain where we are, and not give that much back. Um, and you know, in those moments, uh, we just have to be better. You had a coach's challenge that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we go through our process um, of trying to get the clip and seeing it as many times as we can. And Kevin Young did a really good job. Um, the players always <laughs> feel like they <laughs> didn't commit the crime, but Book was pretty adamant. Kevin gave me the look. And in that moment, you almost have to do it um, to change the momentum, maybe, because um, you're going to use a timeout anyway with two, uh, not necessarily at that point, but um, it was a good call by, by Kevin Young uh, to give me the go ahead to do it. And you know, Book was in a good position. At last, down at the end there, the 7.8, was that just? I just I have to see it first, but I, I think when we put that group in the game, they're able to switch and take some things away so it can cause some confusion. Usually the switches take away the first and second options, you know, and then they're hopefully scrambling. And so I, I think that helped us having like sized guys on the floor uh, switching with contact. And so, you know. Good defense by the guys in that moment. It is. Uh, I put those guys in a tough spot. I think I got them back in. I don't know what it was, maybe f five, four minutes. Um, normally, Chris comes back around, you know, the eight, but we had a good rhythm going, and then we just lost it for a few minutes. So those guys probably felt cold. Um, in that moment, but we were able to make enough plays to win the game. But that that's a tough spot to be in. Um, it's good. It's a lesson for the future, for sure. When you guys built that lead, obviously, this is going to get the open shot. Yeah. Down. What else were you seeing? Was that more of defense? It was the defense. Okay. We had like 13 stops in a row. Uh, we had 10 deflections in the first half. We had 11 in the third quarter. I mean, that, that's how active we were. And you look at the score, it was 31-12. And so conversely, we turned it over in the fourth and you can see the score. So yeah, in the third quarter, it was our defense. Um, and then we were just, we weren't bored with making the right plays either. I mean, you scored 31 points, you're doing something right. Um, a lot of it was transition off the turnovers. Uh, we, we had 38 points off 24 turnovers. So. Yeah, it was the defense. I know you guys lost uh, you know, the lead going down the stretch, but do you see, like, do you feel like you guys have found a good rhythm over these last five games? Because you guys had a pretty rough start to go. And yeah. That's going around. How do you feel your team is rhythm wise going? Uh, you know, it's hard to, to get a rhythm when you've had as many guys in and out as we've had. Um, you know, campaign's been out, Elford's been in, um, DA's been out, you know, that kind of thing. But I feel like we're we're moving in the right direction. We haven't put a complete game together yet. Um, but that happens in the NBA. I mean, I was watching Memphis earlier. I thought they were going to lose. They came back and won in overtime. I mean, you, the, the game is about runs and how you handle those emotional swings. Um, we've been winning some ugly games lately, and that's okay. You know, sometimes you we'd love to win them all by 30, but you just want to win, and that's what we did tonight. Take a couple on Zoom, go with Colin Olsen, Arizona Sports.
Hey, Monty, we were just talking about Cam finding his flow, and uh, he had that pep in his step back tonight. What did you see out of him? Kellen, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Coach was just asking about Cam Payne. Seemed like he had his pep in his step tonight. What did you see from him? I saw, you know, Cam Payne that we're used to. Um, his plus minus was a minus two tonight. The bench was... Um, a negative tonight, but his was the lowest. He, he had um, a good offensive game going. Um, you know, the shot making was there. The penetration to the lane um, was there. You can see him getting his burst back. So uh, we certainly needed um, his scoring off the bench, especially when you look at the starters. Um, no one had like a an amazing night from that group. They just played solid, so his points for sure helped us. Final question is going to be Luis Acosta from Costa Rica. Hi, Coach. Good night. Thank you for your time. Uh, coach, uh, my name is Luis Enrique Acosta from Compendio Deportivo. Five wins in a row. How difficult is play in this level night by night? I mean, the parity around the league is um, at the highest level I, I've seen in a while. I mean, there's no easy games in the league anymore. Um, I don't think any game is easier, but, you know, when I first came in, there were some veteran teams, and when they played young teams, the young teams had no shot. Now, um, anytime you step on the floor, you better bring it. Um, and teams are coming after you every single night. It doesn't matter what you did last year or who was on your team. Um, the talent level in the league is at a high level. And like I said, there's great parity. So, you know, if you win two in a row, five in a row, 10 in a row, it doesn't matter. The next game, somebody's coming at you with great intensity and preparation. And so you can't get happy on the farm when you're winning games, you have to continue to do the things necessary to win, you know, quarter by quarter. And that's what we're working on now. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Sorry, what you were seeing with, with the Harrison, make the lay out there and take that chance. And, and then, and then Coach said you were adamant about challenging it, but how, did you think that you actually were going to get the call? Uh, you never know, to be completely honest. Um, but, you know, I thought I got my two feet down. I thought I was pretty still. and. You know, watching the replay, I think it was definitely a charge. Now, you guys up 24, and the money kind of basically said the bench didn't, wasn't able to hold it up and maintain. But what was it like in those last three, four minutes of trying to stem that tide and hold on to win? I mean, you see what happened. Um, you know, they got some confidence and, you know, started making shots. We were turning the ball over and, you know, they're back into it. You know, the crowd got involved and, you know, they had the momentum, you know, so, you know, you, 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 you can take your lessons in, in a win, but, you know, we have to learn how to just put teams away. You know, we've had multiple opportunities this year to step on teams and, and get the game over with and, you know, failed to do so. So, you know, that's a point of emphasis for us moving forward. We know you're 87% career free throw shooter. At what point are you looking at the ball like, what is this like? Like I don't do this. I, I make these. Yeah, I mean, I honestly get over it pretty quick. Okay. Um, but you're right. You know, I, I do make those, and you know, it's something I'll give my heart, give myself a hard time about probably until next game when I'll be in that opportunity again and knock them down. What's it like going on in the last five minutes when you guys lose a lead and you have to come back cold? Yeah. You know, I saw a couple of shots where, you know, it's probably, I don't know, maybe it was hard to get a lift and yeah. stuff like that. What is it like to try to get a rhythm when you're not expecting to come back to the game? Yeah. I mean, it's a rare situation. It doesn't happen that often, but it's tough. Um, you're sitting over there. I always have the utmost respect for, you know, bench players that come in after, you know, a first quarter, get in their first opportunity and, you know, the second half and been sitting over there for an hour or so. But, you know, it's something definitely starters aren't used to, um, but it's it's a talent, it's a skill to be able to just go straight cold from the bench to to being locked in on the court. Is it more of a mental thing or a physical call? Like, what, you, what is? I'll it? say more physical. You know, your your body, you kind of, you know, honestly, I, 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 we shut down. You know, we we thought it was over with, and 
you know, getting thrown back in there with four minutes left when the other team has a lot of momentum, you know, it's a, it's a tough closeout. I don't think this affects you, but with the rules changes of official, official, you know, making sure they are not falling to the, the, the bait traps of, you know, all the, all the antics of the board. Mm -hmm. Your game does not predicate on that, but from just watching it so far this season, how, how have you seen the, the new emphasis on making sure guys are playing basketball opposed to looking for fouls? How have you observed this? No, um, I've enjoyed it. You know, I feel like the referees are kind of overcompensating right now. I think it's going to go back, you know, not to where it was and them calling so many fouls, but there's a lot of obvious calls that don't get called anymore, too. I think trying to prove a point or overcompensate, but, you know, they're doing it consistently for both teams. So, you know, it's just something that you got to play through. And, and you know, I think when there's a obvious foul, you still should call that foul. But, you know, I think they're just changing the mentality of the players to, you know, stay away from them, them bait fouls and, you know, drawing a lot of contact and, you know, just making making simple plays and using your skills. So, you know, I've enjoyed it. Uh, are there any, any calls in particular that you feel that like, uh, you think they're overcompensating the road now? No, I mean, I've seen a, I've seen a few for, for James and Trey where, you know, them guys have the reputation of hunting fouls, but there's plays where they obviously get fouled that, you know, I've seen on social media that they're not calling you know, that are fouling any league, fouling football and still don't call it. But, you know, you, you know, you have to deal with it. You know, usually you can gauge it out in the first couple quarters of how the game is going to be called. And, you know, you just have to make adjustments. Kevin, I didn't get a good view of the last sequence there in the corner that the, the players were standing. What happened on that? Was that just you guys twitching and getting that, getting that stop or did they miss out on the ball at the end of the game? You talking about when it was off them and it, yeah, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they slipped to the rim. Um, we weren't trying to give up any threes, and you know he mishandled a little bit. I hit it, then another person hit it out of bounds. Mm -hmm. I just didn't see it. I just was making because I was just making sure I was just yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was an obvious call. <laughs> we'll finish with a couple on Zoom. Next up is going to be Kellen Olson. Hey, book. You've talked about defense all year. What did you see in the third quarter that was forcing so many turnovers? Um, I mean, that, that, that was a fun stretch, um, just using our length, using our athleticism and getting out in transition. I mean, understanding that they played a, a tough game last night against Indiana and, you know, we knew the wear down effect would happen at some point. Um, I mean, but they still fall all the way through, through the fourth and came back. But, you know, we could, we could see that on them a little bit in the third. Final question is going to be Luis Acosta from Costa Rica. <clears throat> Luis. Good night. Good night, Devin. Thank you for your time. It's Luis Enrique Acosta from Compendio Deportivo. So far, the team has been passing the ball very well in this season. How important is that for the group? Yeah, it's very important. You know, we have a saying, we say we score mentality. And, you know, everybody is very selfless and, you know, keep, make sure everybody's involved. And, you know, we just try to get the best available shot every time down. And, you know, you never know who that, you never know who that may be. So, you know, it works well for us. Good night to you too, or good morning. Oh uh, man, I, I knocked down a couple of threes. Um, but honestly, it was just, man, really kind of getting back in the flow. Um, took, took the shots I was supposed to take and they went in. I haven't asked you about the hamstring. Since you played, how does it feel right now? Uh, it's cool. Uh, still need to get a little bit better, but um, it's it's feeling a lot better. Coach was talking about how the fourth quarter, you know, the bench needed to maintain that. What do you feel like maybe wasn't flowing or working during that stretch in Sacramento and got back in the game? Uh, we just kind of got careless. Um, I feel like, I mean, I feel like our guys were just a little fatigued, but we got to be able to fight over, fight through that. Um, until the media timeout, and when we came out the media timeout, we were supposed to, man, just just got to be better. Just got to be better. We're supposed to hold it down that whole fourth quarter, uh, so our stars can get more rest. Um, but all in all, like you said, man, we just got to be better as a as a bench unit. I just have one follow up on Devin's block charge. How adamant was he? 
It was big time. Uh, he was he 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 really didn't talk about it when he was on the bench um, because we all kind of figured it was going to be a charge. He just kind of was cool. Um, but I mean, it was huge. He sacrificed his body for the team. That's big time. Go to Kellen Olson on Zoom. Hey, Cam, in, in that huge third quarter, you guys, uh, Monty mentioned the 11 deflections. Do you think that's when you guys are at your best defensively when you're getting your hands on balls like that? Uh, absolutely, especially stops um, and just pushing the pace uh, when we just get to playing free instead of calling plays every time. Uh, man, like, like defense fuels our offense, and um, that's the place in that third. As long as we can keep getting deflections. I think he said we had 10 deflections in the first half, and we had 11 in the third quarter. Uh, we just picked up our intensity.